Hello everyone, this is Evan Abrams, and in today's After Effects tutorial, we're going to talk about using the repeater. And the repeater is for making a lot of the same thing, with slight alterations to each one, so that you can animate many things or arrays of things all at the same time. So it is a tool for you to be more lazy and make more interesting things. For example, pretty much all of the things I've made here that are happening during this intro are all just duplications and slight alterations of one thing. You'll kick yourself when you see how quickly you can make awesome shit. So here in After Effects, we create a new composition. Now it doesn't really matter the size or whatever this is, I'm just using HDTV 1080 preset, which means I have a frame size of 1920 by 1080. We're going with frame rate of 29.97 and a duration of 30 seconds. The first thing I wanna do is make a new background. I make them using solids. Solids are pretty rad. There we go. It's like a pink, uh, maybe not pink, maybe green, maybe orange. Maybe I don't care, okay? I don't care. So good, we have a background and hopefully you do too now. So the first thing I wanna talk about is what is a shape layer? What do shape layers do? Some of you might not know. So I'm gonna make a new shape layer, and as you can see, I have made nothing. whoop de woo that's really great. A shape layer is just a layer that holds other information, and then you add to it other things, like a rectangle. Let's add a rectangle, we'll do that. Now, this rectangle has some properties of its own. It has a size, it has a position, it has a roundness. So that's about it, but still, we don't see a damn thing, okay? I'm gonna add to this a stroke. Okay, so we have a rectangle and we have a stroke. Brilliant. So the stroke has properties to it. For example, it has color, you know, in this case, fully white. Uh, I'd like to uh, change that. You know, do the saturation of like 10. Cool, so it's like a light pale blue, whatever. And there's a lot of things about it, like the stroke width, for example, which is cool, and all sorts of things. So it has a stroke. We have a rectangle and it had a stroke. Not like it, anyway. Now, I'm going to add a group. What is this group? Well, this allows us to group other things. Like, I can take these two things and cram them in the same group, meaning that I now have a transform property, which I can use to offset this by 45 degrees. Cool, that looks nice and dandy, okay? So we've got a bunch of properties, things are good, and we can do things now like animating this single rectangle, okay? What is that single rectangle going to do? Well, let's start it off with a size of zero, and I'm moving ahead 20 frames, and then we move up to 100 pixels large. All right, that's fine. Other things I wanna do is have the stroke width uh, end at zero, but it could start at something like 25, and then here on the transform, I'm going to have the position start at zero, zero, and it's going to end, uh, you know, far away at minus 350, maybe. What does that look like? It looks like this. Okay, great. So that's all coming together. Feeling happy about that. Another thing I want to transform in here is the scale, and this is scale relative to uh, the object. So just keep that in mind. Uh, so, just like the rotation only rotates that object in the group, the scale is also only rotating that object in the group. So it'll end at 100% scale, and it'll start at 0% scale. Take all of these, easy ease them, easy ease them, easy ease, I easy cheese them, uh, and then I take this handle and I drag it like so in the graph editor. That produces uh, what I like to consider a slightly more interesting motion. Now it is repeater time, okay? So we're going to just add a repeater to that. By default, the repeater is creating a line, you know, in this a direction. So basically, you go into the contents here, you have a thing called group one, you've got a thing called repeater, which is acting on that group. And then in there, you can set a number of copies, like eight or something, or whatever. And then here in the transform, this is when you set how weird and crazy things are gonna get. So right now it is taking each copy and it's saying next copy over, you're gonna be 100 pixels over from that first copy, all right? So imagine this is number one, this is number two, number two is 100 away from one, number three is 100 away from two, and so on. So for example, if I start messing with the scale here, um, this one, 
is 1, 2 is 90% of 1, 3 is 90% of 2, and so on down the line. So that's what those do. And then, you know, for rotation, you know, you can see how that gets a little bit problematic. Um, what we're going to do is we are going to set us up to have a rotation of 45, a uh, position of none, and uh, we're good. So that means that, poof, just like that. So now we've created an array that does things radially, a radial array, whatever. So that is how that is simply created. Just whoosh, no muss, no fuss, so easy. So this is creating, you know, we've animated one thing once, and then this is just doing it a bunch. Now, if we want to create more of these, and we want to create more and different things, you just duplicate, and that's Command D or Control D, and I'm going to just offset this in time, okay, cool. And I'm just going to rotate it 22.5 degrees, cool. So, how's that? Poof, poof. So I've got two of the same, all right, well, I wasn't too impressed by that, buddy. Um, you know, you're going to have to do a little bit more than that to win me over. All right, so now I'm just going to add a fill to it. How about I do that? Add fill. Boom. Now it's got a fill on it. How are you feeling now? Feeling less confident? Make sure that that fill is the same color as that stroke thing that I did. Okay, cool. So that's all right. And, you know, here at the end, instead, I'm going to have the size uh, reach zero and have the size start at 100. So it goes from 100 to zero. How about that? So now it looks like this. I only changed two things. I've created something, you know, way better. Um, hit UU on the thing here, and you can do something like uh, amp up the copies to be not 8 but 16. And the rotation is not 45, but 360 divided by 16. All right, so there's a bunch. So poof, poof. I'm knocking this out of the park, and I'm doing barely any work here. So now I'm going to duplicate this again. I want to make, uh, I want to make another thing happen. Um, go in here, hit UU, call up everything I've changed about this. Um, what what would I want to do or make or alter about this thing? Well, uh, let's say this rotation here, uh, set this to 90. All right, so now it's just a bunch of squares. Yes, square. Uh, let's remove the uh, stroke from it. You're gone. You're gone, stroke. No one liked you in the first place. Um, in the end, I would like the size to be... Um, to be a hundred, so quite large, or maybe even larger still, like a, like this. Um, and the position, I want it to be uh, so far away that it goes off the screen. How about that? Pow! That's a totally different thing. It's, it's like a new thing every time. Ah, I don't know how to even keep track of this. Cool. Okay, I'm going to duplicate that again and create a fourth thing, all right? Hit U. Uh, we're changing things like the size. All right, that's cool. I'm hip and I'm with it. Um, we're going to have the size, instead of going uniformly, we're going to go from size starting 0, uh, 0, and it's going to end off on a size that is, I don't know, it's hypothetical, uh, 960 by uh, 50, maybe. So a bunch of uh, narrow bands like this, okay? If it's 960, let's go negative 960 divided by 2, so it goes like this. What does that look like? Brr, looks like this. Okay, sweet. I'm into, I'm into what's happening here. Um, scale. What is the scale going to do? Well, let's just make the scale way too big. Let's do that. So it goes just like that. All right, that's cool, I suppose, if you're into that kind of thing. Uh, let's pretend you're not. And instead, we set the scale down to zero as it comes on. All right, so what we've created here, unfortunately, is something that doesn't exist. So we need to have it go like this. Have a go with that. See, that's way more interesting. That's crazy. So why do these things seem more interesting? All right, this is something we kind of have to discuss. Um, well, really, it's because they're coming and going by separate means. Meaning that, see, we're going from a size of zero to a large size, but at the same time, we're going from a scale of 100 to zero. So when I say coming and going by different means, I mean that the same property that brings it on does not bring it off. And that allows us to have matching curves between both of them 
that the coming and going both use the same type of motion and that's going to create more harmony in that motion itself. So anyway, let's look back at uh, what we've done so far. We've created four things. They go warm, warm, beer, warm, like that. That's neat. I think you've got enough tools now that you can just, you know, mix and match and sort of randomly assign these out into the world and have them do your evil bidding or whatever you're up to. I don't know. See, wasn't that fun? Wasn't that fun? And we really spent like no time making this, you know? It's so easy to do this kind of thing. And I hope that you can see how powerfully easy that was to create interesting stuff. And I would encourage you at this point to stop listening to me, open up After Effects, and just play around with this thing and make crazy woo stuff fly out the camera or reverse it. Things are, are coming together instead of blowing apart or they're moving radially or laterally or whatever. Just abuse the crap out of this repeater is what I'm saying. Apply a repeater to a repeater. Repeat the repeat. You know, put, put that shit on replay and you will love it. Anyway, this has been Evan Abrams talking to you about the repeater. Uh, the big takeaways from this are um, being able to use the number of copies, uh, taking 360 degrees divided by the number of copies and having a perfect circle every time. And the second thing is not bringing things on and off using the same thing. So if something's coming on using the size, take it away with the scale, take it away with the opacity, take it away with uh, the stroke width, take it away with something that isn't also bringing it on. And it'll just be a little bit freer and it'll probably challenge your mind to uh, think outside of the box. I have a hard time thinking outside of boxes. That's kind of my uh, fixation. Anyway, this has been Evan Abrams. If you've enjoyed learning about motion graphics and visual effects, then uh, maybe you should subscribe to this channel. It'll be a lot of fun. I post new things here all the time, or at least once a week. There's something new up here. Uh, if you want to see more of my stuff, go to evanabrams.com. Uh, if you want to tweet at me, I'm at EC Abrams on there. You should uh, get involved on the Facebook channel and on the Google Plus page. I'm trying to post things that are inspiring to me and might be helpful to you to see on there. If you have any questions, hit me up on any of those means. If you have questions about this tutorial, uh, ask me in the comments of this tutorial and I will respond to you about this tutorial. Um, and I suppose that's about it. Thanks again so much for watching. If you've enjoyed your time here, then uh, definitely subscribe. And if you know anyone else who's into After Effects, then share this with them because they want to know and they'll think you're cool for knowing about it. You got the hookups. Anyway, that's enough out of me. I'm Evan Abrams. Thank you for watching and I'll see you around the internet.